everyone, this is Education Hamper and today we will be working our way through the 7 plus King's College Junior School Wimbledon Specimen Paper Group A Mathematics. Here it says the time allowed is 40 minutes. As always, pause the video at each question, attempt it yourself first and then we can walk through the solution. Let's get straight into the paper. So first thing, write our name, Education Hamper. Scrolling on. So in questions 1 to 23, work out the answers and write your answers in on the line. You can show your working if you wish to do so. So here on the right hand side gives us an area where we can show our working. So question 1, 7 plus 4, answer to that is 11. Question 2, 16 minus 9, gives us an answer of 7. 8 times 2, 16, 15 divided by 5. So we know our 5 times table, that gives us 3, 12 plus 8, gives us 20. You can always draw a number line here. Let me show you. So if we write down 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Let's write these down. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 8 across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Answers 20. Question 6, 48 divided by 2, let's do this using long division, so got 2 into 48, how many 2's in 4? So we know this 2 times 2 is 4, so we bring that 4 down, subtract the 2, 2 into 0 we can't do, so we bring the 8 down, how many 2's in 8? 4, make sure it's all crossed off 0. The answer is 24. 9 times 5, 45. 130 divided by 10. So an easy way of doing this is just to take the zeros off. That gives us 13. But let's do it the long division way so we we, we know how we, we're doing that. So 10 into 1 cannot do. So go to the next one, 10 into 13. So 1, 10 is there. Bring the 10 down. 3 minus 0 is... 3, 1 minus 1 is 0. 10 into 3 we can't do, but we have a 0 we can bring down. How many 10s in 30? 3. Let's just finish it. 3 minus 3 is 0, 0, so we're all clear. So the answer there is 13. 23 plus 38. So we can do it. Start on the right hand side. 3 plus 8 is 1, is 11 but we carry the 1 over, so 3 plus 2 is 5, add the 1, 6, so the answer is 61. Here we have question 10, which is a number divided by 2 equals 6. So if we know our, whether that's the 2 times table, we know that 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6, and 6 times 2 is equal to 12. So we ha have question 11, which is, a number minus 9 equals 20, so that's 20 is a whole number, so what would be the answer here? So it would be 29 minus 9, so we take the 9 off, that become 20. Next section, 23 minus a number equals 17. So let's do this one in the case of a number line. So We'll work our ways backward from this. So 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. So how many do we need to move backwards to get 17? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the answer here is 6. 
30 divided by a number equals 6. So what do we need to multiply 6 by to make 30 is another way of thinking about it. And that will be 5. 6 times 5 is 30. So 30 divided by 5 equals 6. 32 plus 6 is the same as 40 minus a number. So what does 32 plus 6 equal? 2 plus 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. 3 plus 0 is th 3. So we need to make 38. So 40 minus 2 gives us 38. Question 15. 8 plus a number plus 9 equals 30. So let's just see what this side adds up to right now. 8 plus 9 is equal to 17. And then if we take 17 away from 30, that will give us the remainder there. So 30 minus 17. So as always, we start on the right-hand side, but 0 is smaller than 7, so we need to steal a 1. So we drop 1 there, and then we take the 1 across. 10 minus 7 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. So the remaining answer is 13. Question 16. Victoria has 33 sweets. She gives 8 of them away. How many sweets does she have left? So this is a subtraction question. So we start off Victoria having 33 sweets. And she gives 8 away. So we take 8 away from that. So where are we here? So 3 is smaller than 8. So we need to steal a 1 from this side. So that becomes 13 minus 8, which is 5. Three mi 2 minus 0 is 2. So the answer is 25. Question 17. A large chocolate bar costs 50 pence. How much do four bars of chocolate cost? So we need to... One bar is 50 pence. Four bars will be 50 times 4. So... Pence equals one bar, four bars equals 50 times four. So with the multiplication, you do the right-hand side, zero times four, and then you do a diagonal multiplication of five times two. So zero times four is zero, four time, five times four is 20. So that gives us 200 pence or two pounds. Question 18. In a bag, there are 20 wine gums. They are shared equally between five children. How many wine gums does each child have? So 20 wine gums between five children. This is a division question. So let's do it using long division. 5 into 20, 5 into 2 you can't do, so 5 across to 20, 5, 20 divided by 5, if you know a 5 times table that will equal 4, so 0 times minus 0 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, so we're clean there, so that answer there is each child will get 4 wine gums. So question 19, James is 30 centimeters shorter than his brother Mark. James is 120 centimeters tall. How tall is Mark? So James is 30 centimeters shorter than Mark. James is 120. So then we just do an addition 120 plus 30, which means 120 plus 30. 0 plus 0 is 0, 3 plus 2 is 5, 1 plus 0 is 1. So that gives us Mark being 150 centimetres tall. Question 20. George has 17 pence. Alex has 21 pence more than George. How much money does Alex have? So this is an addition question. So we know that George has 17 pence, but... Alex has 21 pence more than George, so we need to add 21 pence to 17. That gives us 7 plus 1 is 8, 1 plus 2 is 3, that's 38 pence. So therefore, Alex has 38 pence. If George and Alex put their money together to buy a hot dog, how much money would they have? 
So here we know that George has 17 pence. We just worked out that Alex has 38 pence. So adding the two together, 7 plus 8 is 15. So put a 5 here, but we carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus the additional 1 is 5. So in total, George and Alex have 55 pence. The hot dog costs 52 pence. How much money would they have left? So this is a subtraction question. So we know that both of them have 55 pence. And if they buy one hot dog, which is 52 pence, we need to know how much is left over. 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 minus 5 is 0. So therefore, they would have 3 pence left over. How much would 3 hot dogs cost? So 1 hot dog is equal to 52 pence. So 3 of them, we need to multiply that. 52 times 3, just on the right hand side, 3 times 2 is 6, then we do the diagonal. 5 times 3 is 15, and that equals 156 pence, or 1 pound 56. Question 21. There are 45 children going to the theatre. If each minibus carries eight children, how many minibuses are needed to get the children there? So what we need to know is that each bus carries eight and we need to get 45 children in there. So let's just look at some eight times table. So eight times, say, five, that gives us 40. So we know that if there's five buses, um, it would only carry 40 children. So we need an additional bus to get 45. So 8 times 6 is 48. Therefore, we need six buses that will carry 45 children. And one bus will have three spare seats. So we need six buses. So Mark, question 22, Mark has 26 pound. And Sue has half as much money as Mark. How much money do they have together? So this is a two-step process. First thing we need to know is how much money Sue has. Sue has half that. So we need to divide 26 by 2. Let's do it with long division. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That gives us 2. How many 2s in 2? So that's 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 into 0 you can't do, so we bring the 6 down. 2 into 6, we need 3 2s in 6, so we bring the 6 down, just and that 6 minus 6 is 0. So now we know that Sue has 13 pounds, but how much money do they have together? So now we need to add the 2. So Mark has 26 pounds, and Sue has 13 pounds, which we just worked out. 6 plus 3 is 9, 2 plus 1 is 3, so together they have... 39 pounds. Question 23. Every day John leaves home at 8.45. It takes him 15 minutes to get to school. What time does he get to school? So let's just do a quick clock here. So that's 12, 3, 6, 9. So 8.45 is, looks something like this, I guess. So that's a big hand, small hand. So it takes another 15 minutes to get to the 12 um, and it takes 15 minutes to get to school so if you add 15 minutes to this 8.45 that ge gives us 9 o'clock so the answer is 9 on to question 24 here are three numbers 5, 30 and 6 use all the numbers each time to complete these. So for example, 5 times 6 equals 30. So 6 times something equals something. So we know that 6 times 5 is equal to 30. So we need to know something here in the next one, which is a number divided by another number equals 6. So here we know that 30 divided by 5 equals 6. And the next one, we know that 30 divided by 6 equals 5. So here we've fulfilled the criteria. 
So we've done that. So question 25. Join two numbers which total 100. Right. So little trick here. We know that we're after 100 and we need to have a zero on the end. So I know there's a lot of numbers here, but if we just focus on the right hand side of each of these numbers, we just need to find two numbers that make a zero on the end. So what I mean by that is, so give an example of 81 plus 22. So if you look at the right hand side, 1 plus 2 equals 3. So whatever number that adds up to will always have a 3 on the end. So an example where it equals a 0 is 26 plus 74. So if you just look at the right hand number, 6 plus 4 equals 10. So there's a 0 on the end. So here's a good idea to think maybe 74 and 26 will work. So let's try that. 74 plus 26. 4 plus 6 is 10, so 0, we carry the 1. 7 plus 2 is 9, but we have an additional 1, 10, so 100. So here we are. We've got this number and this number that add up to make 100. Question 26. Write down the correct sign in each of the boxes. So 56 sign 26 equals 84. So it's not a minus or a division because they always make things smaller. Multiplication of two double digit numbers make a far larger number than another dub, dub, double digit number. So the answer must be a plus. We can test that here. 58 plus 26. 8 plus 6 is 14. 5 plus 2 is 7, 8, 84. So 43 sine 17 equals 26. So it's made things smaller. Now division, well I've said before, division and subtraction make things smaller, but division of two-digit numbers together makes a far smaller number than a two-digit answer. So the answer must be subtraction. So should we test that? 43 minus 17. 3 is smaller than 7, so we have to steal a 1. So here we have seven, uh, 13 minus 7, which is 6. 3 minus 1, which is 2. So it gives us the same answer. 9 sine 5 equals 45. So we know our 5 times table. 9 times 5 is 45. And 35 sine 5 is equal to 7. So if you go back to our 5 times table, 7 times 5 is 35. So we can do a 35 divided by 5 equals 7. Right, continue the number patterns. So here we have 4, and it goes to 8. Here we've added 4. 8 into 12, we've added 4. And the same again, so we're adding 4. So here we are, 20 plus 4 is 24. 24 plus 4 is 28. So next example, 7 to 13. So what's the difference here? You need to add 6. 13 to 19, again add 6. 19 to 25, add 6. So it looks like it's adding 6. 31 plus 6 is 37. 37 plus 6 is 43. Next example, 22 to 19. So this is dropping, so there's a subtraction involved. So if we minus 3 from that, 22 minus 3 is equal to 19. 19 minus 3 is equal to 16 and so forth. So each of these is minus 3. 10 minus 3, 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. Question 28. List the coins that you could use to make 76 pence. So we need to make 76 pence. Let's start with the biggest number. So we have 50. And then 50 plus 20 gives us 70. Let's write this down for you guys. 0 plus 0 is 0, 5 plus 2 is 7, so now we've got to 70, we need to make 76, so we have a 5 pence here, so let's add 5 to this 70, 0 plus 5 is 5, 7 plus 0 is 7, so we're at 75, and now we need to make 76, so we add one more, so there we go, add 1, 5 plus 1 is 6, 7 plus 0 is 7, 76. So those are the coins that we need. 23. Write down the times on these two clocks on the line below the digits. So remember, we have 
12, 1, 2, 3, which is the same as 15. And this is just after 6, so that is 615. Right, here's a little bit of a tricky one um, because it's going towards 12, but it's not quite hit 12. So were it to hit the, if it were to go around 15 minutes, it would be 12 o'clock. So now we know that we're at 11. So let's write that down. And it's at the 9, which is equivalent to 45. So 11.45. Question 30. Draw a line from the circled number to the nearest 10 on the number line. The first one has been done for you. So 11, closest 10 to that is 10. 36. Now, it's a little bit of a tricky one here. You'd think you, you may automatically go to 30. But remember, halfway between 30 and 40 is 35. So... If we go above the halfway point, the nearest 10 actually is is, it, is 40. So that's the answer there. 58. Again, 55 is the midpoint. Anything below 55, nearest 10 is 50. Anything above 55, nearest 10 is 60. So that's the answer there. 94. Now, in this case, we're below the midpoint between 90 and 100, which is 95, which means the closest 10 is 90. Thirty one. Look carefully at this pattern. So we have a grid pattern here with some star shapes, a square, and, and part of it is shaded. So question first part, what fraction of this grid is grey? So two out of the four squares are grey, so two into four. And we can simplify this if we divide top and bottom by two, because we know that both of these are divisible by two. So two divided by two is one. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that equals half. What fraction of this grid has a shape in it? So 1, 2, 3 squares have a shape in it out of 4, so that's 3 out of 4. What fraction of this grid has a square in it? So only one of these has a square in it, 1 out of 4 has a square. So what fraction is white and a star in it? So there's two things we need to look at. So 2 out of 4 squares are white, but only 1 out of 4 have a star in it and, and, and are white. So there's your answer there. Question 32. Using the numbers 1 to 9 once only, so that's important to remember once. Fill the magic square so that three numbers in each line add up to 15. Okay, so we need to add up to 15. So if we start in this middle line because we're missing one square so add these up 7 plus 5 equals 12 what do we need to add to 12 to make 15 if we add 3 to it, it makes us 15 so 3 just to confirm uh, we'll do this sum 8 plus 4 plus 3 8 plus 4 equals 12 and then 12 plus 3 2 plus 3 is 5 1 plus 0 is 1, 15, so that's correct. Now we move on to this part because this square is missing. 4 plus 2 equals 6. And then let's do 15 minus 6, which gives us an answer of 9. So 9 goes in there. And then we can look at this one. 9 plus 5, that gives us 14. 14 plus 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, 1 plus 0 is 0, so that answer is 1. So now we're looking at this top one, 8 plus 1 is equal to 9. And then what do we need to do to 9? Um, let's do it a different way, 15 minus 9, that gives us a difference of 6, so we put a 6 in here. So have we met the criteria? So we're only allowed to use 1 to 9 o once only, so We've only used one once, three once, nine once, and six once. So I think we've met the criteria there. And if we want a final check of this line here, seven plus two is equal to nine. Nine plus six, so seven plus two is nine. Nine plus six is equal to 15. Question 33. On the following shapes, draw a straight line through the dot. The line must cut the shape in two equals halves. 
So an example here is a square and they have a dot here and they've cut that exactly in half by putting a line through the middle. So our first question is we have a square again but the dot is on a corner. So in, co in order to cut this equally in half we need to run up to that corner there. So this square is equivalent to that square. Now with the triangle we have a midpoint dot so if we run straight down to that corner that gives us two equivalent sides. Right, it gets a little bit more tricky here. We've got a hexagon. We have a midpoint on this face here. So to cut it in half, we need to have a midpoint in this face straight across. Put a line straight through there, half. Um, and here there's still a hexagon again, uh, but it's on a corner point. So we find the equivalent corner. So this is a straight line. We don't want to be on this, this side, we want to be on the other side. Then we draw a straight line through here. Sorry, it's not straight, but you get what I mean, like that there. Okay. Ah, now we get to a very tricky point. Um, we have a a shape here, which is is two L's together, I guess. Um, to get to the midpoint, we need to find this dot on the other side. So we know there's a little gap there in this face here. So around here. And then we'll try and draw a line that goes straight down to there. Right, next point here, we have the corner on this side. So we find the equivalent corner on the other side, just there. And then we'll split it in half like that. Or pretty much like that. Let's do that again. Again. There we are. Let's get rid of this one. There we go. So that's uh, equivalent to the shape. Right. Let's zoom out a little bit on this question so we can see the... Right. Tim slid his finger along this route from start to stop. So he started up here, stopped down here. He started writing how his finger moved, so complete the moves. Left three squares, so he went one, two, three, left three squares. Then he went down one square. Then he went one, two, right. He went to the right um, two squares. So right two squares. Then he went one, two, down two squares. Then he went one, two, three left three squares so let's just write that down left three squares so we're now here and then he goes down one two three four so down four squares and then the final step which he goes to the right one two three four five right five squares right now go back and check all your answers well done we've gone through this paper really proud of you guys uh, if you have any issues with questions or you have some comments please leave them um, below um, but i'll see you next time hopefully with another paper thank you for spending the time listening to this